coming in hot, Chichi. How we doing, brother? Do you know how fired up I am today? <laughs> First of all, one of my favorite guys in the world. I laugh all the time at this guy. Strong Island, not Wrong Island guy. <laughs> One of the funniest dudes on a planet. We are so freaking lucky today, Case. What the hell uh, is dude, going on? We, dude, we are, man. We, I'm so fired up, too. Dude, one of the best stand-up comedians out there right now, maybe even ever when it's all said and done. Um, he, he, he's part of the host of the Pete and Sebastian show, with uh, the podcast, really, with Sebastian Maniscalco. He had a bunch of comedy specials. This guy's got three hour long specials on Amazon Prime Video. Latest one being for Pete's sake. I think I'm, I'm, I have that right. Been on like every big show too. I was going through the thing. David Letterman, Leno, Conan, all that, all that stuff. One of the funniest guys out there. Before, let's just bring him on, man. Pete Corielli, how you doing, brother? Peter? Ah, uh, 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 dude. Thanks for I'm coming into the mayor's man. office with us. Yeah. Uh, listen, you guys are way too kind. I'm psyched to be hanging out with you. As, as I said before we started, bro, huge fan of your playing days. And Richie, been listening to you. So when this one came along, I'm big fans of you guys. I, oh. I listen, I was texting with Richie yesterday because yeah. I was listening to you guys yesterday talking about Volpe and stuff. Yeah. And I told Richie, I'm like, hey, get the animals out of the room. <laughs> What do you got a game for him over there? Put him I in the garage for the show. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, he made something about his wife. Oh, I don't even know if he's got a nice wife. Get the fucking dogs in the garage, guys. All right? You're oh, right. Shit. You're right. Dude, <laughs> Pete, it's, a, Pete, it's incredible, bro. Every other show, Chich like, hey, bro, I got to go. Uh, I got to get the dog out of here. And then the cat's like running over his face. I'm like, hey, Chich, how about we do what Pete says? Put the freaking cats and dogs in the garage for the show. Yeah. Like every You're every right. show, he's like, hey, Macy's barking. No, I got to go. Someone's got to take a shit. He just threw up over here. He's going. <laughs> it's right? all facts. When, when we first started the podcast they do with Sebastian, like we started like, gosh, nine years ago. And I yeah. moved to this small town where I live in, Fredonia, New York, which we talked about for a sec. Yeah. And I, I, I was we're trying to find a house. In the meantime, I'm living with my in-laws. I don't, they don't even have internet. That's how old they are. <laughs> so I would, I would park my Jeep Wrangler uh, to get away from everyone. This is, this is to you, Richard, right? Because you won't even get away from me, dog and cat. I took my Jeep Wrangler to the Timmy Ho's, Tim Horton's parking lot. And I get in the back of the Jeep and I put curtains on the window and I do the cast with the bed. And one time I'm, I'm smoking pot and I'm smoking truth. Trooper pulls up next to me to get a coffee. I go to Sebastian, hold on, hold on. He goes, what? I go, I, I think I might be getting arrested. Oh, my God. <laughs> that happened to Sean three days ago. Sean almost got arrested screaming, doing a podcast outside. Oh, the other, oh the other day I'm at, I'm at a hospital and uh, I had to go outside really quick do the podcast with Chinch and I and uh, I got it I got my I got my phone up on this flagpole and I'm like hey yeah 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 you know I'm just doing you know, hand gestures and all stuff and this cop comes out he's like sir he's like is everything okay out here he's like do I, we have a problem I go no I'm just doing a po I'm just oh doing the mayor's office podcast like don't arrest yeah. me I you know I don't I don't have curtains. You watch the news, Shorty? You, you, you look like you're making a Proud Boys recruiting video, right? <laughs> well, put the camera right on the flagpole. <laughs> oh, my God. That's nuts. Oh, God. Hey, yeah. so wait. So you said you went to Tim Hortons because they had, they had, they only had the internet service they, there. They had internet, so I could stay in the Jeep and, and lift their internet because if you're in a parking lot, you can get it. So, oh my God. I mean, that's dedication. Meanwhile, Richie won't even go in the garage. And <laughs> <laughs> true. Oh my God. It's incredible. Oh, so so you guys now that's interesting. You guys yeah. started doing that podcast nine years ago. We did, yeah, and you know, and it started out as just yeah nine years ago. We did it. We only do it once a week, and we never yeah. had guests because when we started, he was like, "Do you want guests?" And I'm like. <laughs> Hey, you know, I'll have them, but I ain't getting them. And he goes, he goes, I, I ain't getting them. So, so I'm like, all right. And then, you know, I mean, obviously Sebastian got huge and that helped a lot too. But yeah. then, you know, then like, you know, we just, the only guest we'd ever have is JJ Watt comes on because, mm -hmm. you know, he went back from the beginning and, uh, you know, he gets caught blanche. Love to have you guys on. Oh, good. dude, we would love to. We would Crazy? love to come on. You kidding me? Oh, my God. We would yeah, love to come on. We're starting to branch out. We're starting to branch out and do guests. So I'd love to, man. Oh, so, uh, dude, anyway. just give, give us a call whenever. I'm, I'm ready. I am ready. Uh, <laughs> now, how long you guys been doing this? 
Dude, this is our this, we've two, been doing years, our, two year, two years. Two years. At the years, end of this, this week. Our, at the end of this yes. week, it's two years. So we're at, we're where are we at? Like two hundred fifty episodes. We yeah. were doing it once a week for a while, yeah. And then we start. Now we've been doing it every day and just doing like you know just. You know, just kind of. Oh, nice. Well, we, well, Chinch and I talk almost every day, so I was like, "Bro, why don't we just record our phone conversations <laughs> really and call it a do. podcast?" Yeah. Yeah. There you go, man. I was actually going <laughs> to ask, dude, how do you? Because we're in a, I, we have a lot of parallels. You guys are in comedy, we're in sports, but like, you guys are so freaking busy. So are we. Like, I, I don't think people really understand the discipline that's involved in like, hey, I have to do this Wednesday. I, like, I can't take yeah. the kids. I heard you talking the other day. You were like. You were saying how it was like you turn to your wife and I'm like I got the podcast and she's like yeah I know you got the podcast this week but <laughs> how, how do you how do you guys navigate how do you guys navigate your time because you're both so freaking busy we we yeah, juggle yeah. all day every day for this well we made it's interesting you say that because we made two rules when we started and the first rule was that if because so, obviously we're not live we're like if somebody says something then after the cast they want to take it out the other one can't go oh come on you, you can't do that shit because it's a, be too annoying <laughs> and then the other one was you know no set time we work around each other so like right. there's times when like you know it'll be like three months straight <laughs> where like you know i happen to be home so it's no big deal but I'm working around this guy's schedule. But then, like, when I was right, I was writing on Kevin Can Wait, the sitcom on Long Island. Right. Oh, my God. I would slide out of the writer's room meeting. Like, I'd do a yawn. <laughs> i do a yawn. Like, oh, like, I'm getting coffee. I'm going to do a podcast. They think I'm getting a cup of coffee. <laughs> and my office was right next to the writer's room. So, like, they'd be in there pitching sitcom episodes. <laughs> and then he'd be tackling at Sebastian. <laughs> Meanwhile, I wasn't getting paid a dime for the cast, and I'm making like <laughs> tons of cash writing on the sitcom. But, um, so you know, man, it's like, you, and, and then you know, Rich, like the real, like when you know you're like really committed is this. I was, like I said, I was writing on the sitcom. Kevin James asked me to come write, and I never met a great guy. We had a blast writing this thing with all the writers. So season season one, I had an apartment. And I'm like, why did I pay all this money? I was on Long Island because once this ep season was over, I'm going home. <laughs> So season two, everyone from L.A. is getting all these expensive apartments. I find some lady who lives in like, a, oh, a, 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 dare I say it, and not such a great part of Long Island, <laughs> near, near Brentwood, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. That's an M13 shit over there. A, a, a basement. Yeah, right. Exactly. You don't even go to the deli there. You don't even go to the so, so I rent a basement apartment for like 800 months. All I have is a mattress <sighs> on the floor and a blanket with like a few clothes laid out. I said to Sebastian, I look like I'm an Al Qaeda, <laughs> a sleeper cell, right? So, but this lady, I had no internet when I get back to her apartment every Tuesday. So she would let me run a long cord up her basement, through her living room, up into her bedroom, into her router. And she'd be eating dinner in the, in the, in the living room, watching like the prices right with her husband. I'm like, hey, Debbie, me again. And she's like, oh, got to do the cast. And Sebastian would be like, are you running a wire through some old lady? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dedication oh, oh my god uh, so so oh yeah god. we've been we've been through it all with this thing man so but the key is like you two man no matter what you, as soon as you start you see the other person you like each other so you're in a good mood you're like let's do it <laughs> some of the, it is it is great yeah when you when you get on it you know you're rolling and and you guys on that show it is incredible to, to see the friendship that you guys have Cause I mean oh, the the, the laugh the laughter back and forth like it, it's and I also too I was thinking this like first off as a stand up comedian like I must think wor the world must look a little differently because you're like you, something happens to you you're like oh that's a bit I could use that yeah I just gotta yeah. develop it is your brain because I because when I watch this, the um the Pete and Sebastian show to me it's like oh my god this is like they're bringing up you know. Like the other day you were talking about when you walk into a party, like, is the food out already? Is the charcuterie board ready to go? It's like, oh, these right, are all, right. these are, there's like a million bits. So yeah. as a, as a stand up comedian, man, is it like, yeah. is your brain going 24 seven on putting well, material together <laughs> for the stage? It's, you know what it is? I don't think you do it purposely. I think maybe a lot of comics, I know me and Sebastian, that's what made us migrate to stand up is because you, you're doing that anyway. You find in life. <laughs> 
Like Sebastian does it blatantly, and he he does it to me. Like I'll be out to dinner with him, and I'm like, I don't do the <laughs> examining thing to me. Like you know, you save that for the rest of the world. But he, you know, but it's like I said. Like I'll give you a perfect example. The other day, uh, my wife's good friend of my wife's uh, it was her, her birthday party is like a 45th. And her husband uh, is going to take her out for a fancy steak dinner in Buffalo. Uh, that's not a surprise. But the, surpri <laughs> the surprise is right before they leave town, they're going to pick us up and we're going to be joining. Them. So now I'm saying to my wife, now they have two kids that are young. How do you know she's like not the wife's night in the car going, oh, I'm going for a nice steak dinner with my husband. And then they bang her right into our driveway. <laughs> and she's like, what are we doing here? He's like, we're going to take Pete and Jackie. How do you know she's not going? Finally, one night, we have one night alone, AJ. And no, now we're going to pick up Pete and Jackie. Let's listen to Pete and Jackie talk, right? <clears throat> so Jackie goes, nobody else thinks like that. And I'm like, Sebastian will when I tell him, I guarantee you. So, and you don't even, it's just the way you think, you know what I mean? It's not like, I, I don't, I used to go more like, that's a bit, but now, you know, I, I don't say it out loud, but I still think it all the time. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you want to explain? But, it. but, but it's ama it's amazing. It is amazing the the way your brain thinks. Though you guys are so quick witted. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. could, have you ever got on stage and uh, like, is everything always prepared on stage, or are you winging some of it too? Oh no, a little both, man. I definitely have bits I want to do, but like like this past week, I played a, a old uh, club that I knew wasn't going to be crowded on purpose. So like I had new bits I wanted to try that I knew what I was going to say, but then I was going to go with it. You know, sometimes, you know how it is. You could take batting practice every day, right? but until it's live, there's a level of concentration. You can't get there until we're there, you know, it's so like, true. I can't explain it. So, yeah. you know, and then when you get to that place, that's when you, you find, you know, new ground, you know, like, so anyway, um, yeah, it's a little of both, but, uh, never, I, I can't go up and go, I'm going to do this, 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 like George Carlin does like that. The building could right. be burning down and Carlin's still going to be sticking to the monologue. But some people love that. I'm like, you know, come on, we got to <laughs> go off. I got to tell you something. Cause I heard you yesterday talking about your love of Bon Jovi, yeah. right? Yeah. So, my, so, so my mom, a couple of months back, she, she moved into like a, one of this high end, uh, independent living facilities in Jersey. And I only bring up that it's high end because I'm on the phone with her and she goes, I'm making some friends. And she goes, I was talking to two women and she goes, I'm not going to lie. Everybody brags about their kids. And I was telling them about you. And I'm like, well, you may have never heard of him, but if you Google him, he's doing a lot of good stuff. Right. <laughs> so then one lady walks away and the other lady goes to my mom, you know who, you, who that was? You were talking to him. My mom was like, who? And she goes, that, that's John Bon Jovi's mother. Oh, no mom, shit! No so, way! So then my, my mom goes, my mom comes back with me. She goes, you believe that? I'm bragging about you to Bon Jovi's mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Oh, shit. That's yeah. so good. Oh, that is so great. Um, <clears throat> so, so, Pete, growing up for you, like, yeah, you know, obviously Chinch and I, are, we're, big, we're big baseball fans and, and uh, talking baseball and stuff like that. Who, who was your team? Oh, forget it, man. I grew up a Yankee fan on Long Island. Uh, right. that, and that's because of Reggie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Reggie right, right. everything. <laughs> I, I, we would even like, you ever do this? Like, you would try to time, Rich, you might remember this. You try to time the TV. Like, I flipped from Laverne and Shirley back <laughs> yeah. to the Yankee game yeah. when I thought Reggie was up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He yeah. should be up again in about 11 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's Willie Randolph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't need to watch the slap hitter. You know what I'm <laughs> I love Willie, but yeah. So, but anyway, but we'd always go to Met games be, instead at Shea, because as my father liked to say, I go, Dad, why can't we go to Yankee game? He goes, because I want my car battery to be under the hood <laughs> after the game's over. So we're going to Shea. But you can eat your Reggie bar in the back of the car on the way. Get ready, get ready for a little leave and silly. Leave and silly. <laughs> Rusty, leave and silly. Rusty Stom, if he's not if he's not too busy cooking somewhere today. Gonna... <laughs> Look at that. My buddy loved Rusty Stom, and he was like his favorite thing to do was cook. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, we, need, we need some hints. We need some yeah. hints. Why, why oh. is he cooking? Man. So oh you, you so listen, man. You had a hell of a career, man. I oh, mean, dude. 
I was looking up the stats. You had 25 home runs, batted like 332, and made 200 grand that year. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. Dude, I I was was free. You were doing it for free. (laughs) (laughs) I was at the All Star game that year, 1999. We roll up. We roll up. It's, uh, you know, I I, I walk in. I'm like, did I win a a contest? Like, how the hell did I get him? 25. I'm on the bus. We're on the bus going from the hotel to the clubhouse, right? First day. Randy Johnson's ahead of me jeff bagwell piazza i'm like wow. what the i'm like they must have got it wrong like what the hell is sean casey doing in the back of the bus pete i'm just trying to hide like holy shit i can't i hope they, i hope they don't they, they don't recognize me and tell me to go home you know sean, so, tell them about your first car sean tell them about your first car in a big leagues oh my, please oh my oh my god before i get to the 99 store i'll tell you about my first car in the big leagues yeah. I got drafted in 95, bro. I brought two Honda Accords, one for me, one for my sister. I'm like, Beth, we're rich. My dad made like 33 grand a year grinding as a chemical salesman. I got 200 grand to sign, which Uncle Sam takes 100. And then my mom yeah. was like, hey, Sean. He's like, hey, Sean, uh, we owe $70,000 for University of Richmond loans. I'm like, well, aren't you going to pay for them? He's like, we can't afford that. So <laughs> I paid those loans. Then I bought two cars, right? Uh, so bought- time out, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> You get drafted in the second round at the University of Richmond, and they still want tuition? Yeah. <laughs> what, what you want? You want on scholarship? <laughs> Are you kidding me, bro? I went to University of Richmond. I didn't have one offer out of high school. They 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 came to see me play. They gave me a thousand dollars, which is basically like your meal plan for like six weeks and and like a couple right. books. So I had nothing. I, I, I had by, nothing. The, by the time it's looking like you're gonna get drafted in the second <laughs> round, they don't go. Listen, here, here's a card. You can use the meal plan at the very least. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing, wow. dude. No, nothing. I got a little bit more my junior year, but first couple of years we were throwing thirty grand out there like it was going out of style. My parents were like Man. taking a sec, second so mortgage had, out. So you had so the I, loan to pay. Wow. Loan to pay, and I bought a Honda Accord two-door, baby. Thing was so legit. Little green, you know, real nice green. Bought my sister a car, too. Both stick shifts so we could save a couple bucks real nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Pete, I, I got this car, bro. Freaking, I think I'm legit. You know, I, I got a dent in it one day. I was coming out of a parking garage. Boom, no big deal. I was like, I ain't fixing that. But I roll up in, in uh, 99, with the Re- uh, 99 with the Reds, my first spring train, and boom, I got the, you know, I've had it since 95. Roll up in the two-door Honda the core with a dent in the front freaking i'm pulling in the players lot day one of spring training like whoa 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 like security comes out they block my car they're like sir <laughs> sir sir <laughs> they go, they go, this is the players lot this is a players lot you got up you know the games down there i go I, i'm a player i said i'm a player <laughs> They go, they go, they go, wait, whoa, whoa, you you know, you can't be a player in this car. Like you got a dent in the front. It's a two door Honda Accord. Like we've never seen this kind of car pull into a player's lot before. I'm like, I swear to God, I'm the first baseman of the Cincinnati Reds. I swear to God. So, bro, they, so, they pull me to the side. Here comes Lark. Here comes Barry Larkin in his Hummer. Here comes Greg Vaughn in his Mercedes. Here comes oh. Denny Nagel in a Tesla. It didn't even exist in 99, but I think he had something like it he pulls in you know and i'm like oh so dude they got to go in and get the traveling secretary and the pr guy to come out and vouch for me and they're like is this guy a player and i'm like i'm like to rob butcher who's the pr guy like butch tell me go and he goes to the security guy yeah this is our first base with Shaw casey he's like well what's up with his car he's like well he hasn't really made any money yet so so he's still driving this hunk of shit so 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 fast forward to, to the 99 All-Star game, bro. I'm making like 180, 200 grand. I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm loaded. Wow. You know what I mean? I'm loaded. So I go to the game and I remember seeing that A-Rod, just for making the game, gets a $2.5 million bonus. Oh and I'm thinking, God. where the hell is my bonus? Like, this is my shot to make a couple extra bucks. But the Reds yeah. were so cheap at the time. There was no bonuses for anybody, right? So, yeah. so dude, I'm rolling into that game and... It's a, it's the all century team. I don't know if you remember that game, the 99 all-star game, all century team. Pedro Martinez is starting. Oh and yeah. Ted, Ted Williams comes out of right field. It's incredible. Yeah. And, I'm, and like, still, I'm like, they announced me for the game. They're like, you know, backing up Mark McGuire, Sean Casey. I'm like, let's go, baby. Let's go. You know? yeah. And I'm look, looking around. There's Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, all these guys. So we're walking up, we're walking up to throw out the first pitch, bro. And I get a pat on the shoulder and I'm like, I'm just like, I'm just like a kid in a candy store. I, I'm walking up and it, it freaking guy puts his hand on my shoulder. Tur- I turn around. He goes, Hey, Sean, I just want to introduce myself. I'm George Brett. 
He goes, oh. oh yeah, dude. Swear to God, that's how I felt. Yeah. He goes, he goes, man, I love your swing. It's you know such a good swing. And bro, Pete, it was the first time I was ever speaking. I was like, ha, ha. I couldn't talk. And I'm like, oh god, three thousand hits, George Brett. Fuck, oh, oh, oh. I couldn't god. even talk. So I, I'm, I'm like one of the greatest moments of my life. Now listen, to this. this is an incredible story. So a couple years later, a couple years ago, I'm with uh, obviously I'm with, still with MLB Network, and Greg Amzer and I are doing the red carpet show. Well, Derek Jeter, it's his last All Star game, right? So Jeter's talking to him, and we say, we say to Jeter, we say, hey, man, Jeet, all these years, all these years, bro, all the titles, greatest Yankee shortstop ever, living legend, what's your greatest moment ever in the big leagues? And you're thinking he's going to say this title, you know, 96, blah, blah, blah. He goes, the greatest moment I've ever had. This is so great. He goes, was at the 99 All-Star game when the All-Century team was around, <clears throat> was around, and Ted Williams came out. And we all walked up to throw out the first pitch. Now, I almost think I'm like, is he going to tell my story about George Brett? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, <laughs> this is incredible. So he's like, he goes, so he was coming from the American League side. I was coming from the National League side. So George Brett grabs me. He says, as we're walking up to Ted Williams, he goes, I get a pat on my shoulder. I turn around. It's Hank Aaron. And Hank Aaron shakes, reaches out his hand and says, hey, hey, Derek, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Hank Aaron. I really love the way you play the game. And then we converged on Ted Williams. But I hear that story and I say, uh, at the same moment, he's having one of the greatest moments of his life with Hank Aaron. Right. I'm right. having one of the greatest moments of my life with George Brett. Right. That's unbelievable. Isn't, isn't that unbelievable? And, and, and I let you know, too, that, man, no matter what all the other stuff he did, you know what it feels like to have the best moment that Regina ever had. Did you have it? <laughs> I was right next to his ass. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Wait, 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 let's be honest. We're a more exciting person because we all know the pine tar guy. I only know, <laughs> I only know Hank from the baseball card. Totally. Yeah, right. Wow, man. What a, what a, what a moment, you know? Yeah. I mean, and then, and then to be, uh, make it a couple more times. Oh. That's validation. That's yeah. validation. That is validation, that's like, that's, man. That's when you come back and you go, I knew I didn't need to throw out the tuxedo. <laughs> I knew I was going to need this thing again, baby. Yeah. yeah, I knew I'd be back here at the All-Star yeah. Game. <laughs> yeah, that's so, great. So great, man. Dude, what about you? Like, what's the, what, what, what do you feel like in, in your career, man? You've had so many unbelievable moments. You've had specials. You've been on the big late night shows. You know, you got a, you got a podcast yeah. with your boy, Sebastian. Like, is there a moment, a couple moments that you have where you look back and you go man i can't believe that happened to me uh yeah i i, I yes like the first one i guess was uh was the first time i did letterman you know i mean that's like kind of for everybody but yeah. but, but i kind of it's funny the material was there and i'm proud of that but like i'll never forget i can't even look at it anymore but <laughs> if, uh, if, hold on let me just uh how do i stop this someone's trying oh uh, we're still here you can see me right yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, when I was doing Letterman, <coughs> my wife talks me into, you know, I get a whole new suit and I get this pink shirt. You could, I think you could see it online, not now, but uh, it's like a button hot pink shirt. And I got the shirt unbuttoned to about here and I got the collar coming out <laughs> over the suit a little bit, right? <laughs> now, Eddie Brill, the guy who used to book Letterman, he goes, when you come out, uh, you know, you, 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 everyone gives Dave an acknowledgement, you know, maybe a wave or a nod, you know, just something to acknowledge that, you know, cause you don't go right up to him or anything. So I come out, I got, I got the suit with the pink shirt out. I look at Letterman, I hit him with the double gum. <laughs> I hit him with the, I go, oh, afterwards I go to my wife. He, he didn't know if I was going to do stand up and try to sell him an eight ball with cocaine. <laughs> so, so, you know, that was a great moment, but you overthink that shit. You overthink it, you know, when it's happening. But the other oh one that God. isn't as like, isn't like, as like, you know, I've done a lot of stand up and stuff. And this one isn't as exciting in the same way. But for me, it was like so eye opening. So I like writing, you know. And sometimes in the past, I've written my own sitcom idea or something. And when I like, I saw, saw one to CBS and they always would go, okay, now we got to get you a writer. And then the writer takes all the money. He goes and hides in some dumb bungalow or, or wherever he is. And then he comes out with one of these same old lame old scripts and he goes nowhere. And now I'm back to square one. And it would drive me nuts because I'm not like a writer. So Kevin James had the sitcom and that came out of nowhere. I was camping. They called up and go, hey, dude, I got a room full of writers. 
I like your stand up. I could use a comic in here to be part of the writing staff. <clears throat> and the first day I got in this writer's room on Long Island, it's for the sitcom. And there's like 10 guys in there. One is this guy, Bruce Helford, who's a legend who's done like everything from the original Roseanne or George Lopez show. Like he ran them all. Right. And then, you know, Kevin's in there and he's awesome. I love Kevin James and all these great writers. One guy in there created Barney Miller. Remember Barney? Oh, Miller? Yeah. Holy shit. yeah. This guy was like, this guy was like 67 years old. He's got like four houses. He's just in here as a favorite of Kevin. And we all sit down and, and, and then there's some dude that that's an assistant who writes whatever you say and they got a screen and everyone just starts belting stuff out that the characters could say. And within like, I don't know, a couple of hours, I'm just taking it all in. Then I start saying stuff. Then I get one that gets a big laugh that gets in there. And by the end of the day, I was I was like, you know, on the phone, with my wife going, I can do this shit. I can I knew I knew I could do this shit, you know? So so now they can't do that to me anymore. And now we just me and this other guy who I wrote on that show with who I loved, we just wrote eight episodes of the show called Flagrant to star Michael Rappaport. Yes. And wow. and Rich, you gotta hear this, especially because you're in this world. You appreciate yeah. this. The the show starts out, right? Because I, I hate when you watch a show and it starts out and they try to tell you what everyone does. So like the woman will be like, I'm a nurse. So I have to go to work at the hospital now. Like, and then you go, OK, obviously you're a nurse. That was, that was for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I wanted to show with this character without like having to show it. So this thing starts out with Rappaport. I don't know if I can say too much, but he lives up in Buffalo and he's his age now. But back in the day, he was the best basketball player to come out of Jersey, the Patterson, New Jersey area in, in like forever. Right. And he stayed local. This was before St. Pete had its run. We wrote this uh, freaking thing. Wow. He stayed local and took some local Patterson University to the uh, Sweet 16. And then he threw the game because his old man was caught up in some stuff. And he threw it like <laughs> embarrassingly, like, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you knew after two minutes he was throwing the game, <laughs> you know? So and so, and this so this show starts out with a 30 for 30 about that. Cool. And Mike comes into his kitchen and the, and the wife had popped the TV on. She left the room. So it's like it's always on. And he didn't even oh. agree to do it. And he's like, how could they even make this? I'm not in it, you know? That's great. And, and then, you know, all of his friends and they even got clips of Mullen in there talking about. <laughs> so, so now here it is all these years later the guy who's on that team with him now is the new coach at Patterson and he invites him to come be an assistant coach uh, so he thinks it's his new chance but uh, but it's not the whole thing goes down it's very funny man That's great. It's very funny. he's being well, used when, again I'll put it that way when's that coming out well right now we sold it and the guy's like I'm, I want to start making them uh before I even sell them. So he's like, I I'm, I'm going to make them and we're going to sell them as we go. There's no way we're not going to sell this thing. And I just want to start going and put my big time TV producer, Aaron Kaplan. You may have even heard of him too, Rich. He makes a yeah, lot of stuff. Yeah. How does that but work yeah, yeah, nowadays so with like, are you selling with Netflix and, and Amazon and everything, whatever you're just trying to yeah. sell it to the best place or or is it different than like 10 years ago before all this, uh, this it's, stuff? I think there's a feeling out process going on now more than ever, because now there's so many of them, you know what I mean? That like, it's just blowing up. So I think, uh, you, you know, you definitely have places in mind where you'd love it to be, but you know, at the end of the day, I think you, you, know, you just really want to make it, especially because once it's made, you know, uh, who remembers where? Like, you know, I'm watching Yellowstone. I think it's on uh, uh, the third <laughs> network. It's been right? like it's going out on Paramount. First, it, first it was playing in some guy Jerry's house, and <laughs> then it went to Paramount. Yeah. Now I'm catching it on this Peacock. I don't even. So who the hell knows anymore, right? Point. Let's just make it. Let's just fire up the cameras. <laughs> This guy, they go to save money. They're like, we might film in Belgium to save money. Belgium. <laughs> Belgium. Belgium can look like Patterson, New Jersey. All right, let's do this. Let's go to Belgium. Let's do the waffles. <laughs> know, waffles and chicken. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. And you, ever, you ever on a Zoom call like that? You hear something that crazy that you side text your friend oh, on yeah. the Zoom call? Like, I'm texting the other right. I go, guy, fucking Belgium? Can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. So we'll That's see. So yeah, Rappaport's a great dude, man. And we wrote this thing for his voice. So I hope it gets made. It's very exciting. Oh man. my God, dude. That's so yeah. good. <laughs>
What about what so, about you and you and Jackie? Ch- Chinch and I talk about this all the time. Like, hey, yeah. what show? What shows are you watching right now? Like, what what are you guys sitting down to watch? You got any shows that you're locked into? Yeah, well, I mean, we, I I did Yellowstone like everyone did, but then we yeah. slid over to, bro. I heard you last night. I watched the offer. I saw oh. all those. That was great. It's incredible. I'm 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 I'm, yeah. I'm in it. I'm in it right now. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh. As a matter of fact, I was telling uh, my fiance last night. I go every 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 episode we watch. I go. In the middle of it, I go, this show's incredible. This yeah. show's incredible. Like just the, the the way they looked at it, you know, what's you know, the, the mafia being involved right. still. It's incredible. It's, it's like, and that guy, you know, just get it done. Get it made. <laughs> get, get it, it made. made. Yeah. You know? Yes. And I don't know. Did you I don't want to give it too much away, but did you get up to the horse head part yet? Oh yeah, when he's like, I can't film that. When Coppola's like <laughs> right, uh, that, right. when it was like that, that's not real. I can't film yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So, Rich, I gotta tell you this part. I don't care if it's given it away. It's been out for a while. Do it. They used they used a real fucking horse head. <laughs> and they told them it was fake. So everybody's oh, punching oh, it and oh, shit going. Geez. Wow. They got it from like a, a butcher. Oh like, my. Right on some yeah. And, they, and everyone's like, wow, really? Oh it's my so goodness. real. And they're like, yeah, and it's because it is. Yeah. I, I gotta watch that. You're Italian like me, dude. Like cr- Christmas Eve, there's just a Godfather mar- marathon going on. Like there's just they're shooting people in the yeah. heads, and we're like you know saying our prayers before dinner at the chanchamino yeah, house i gotta watch this I, thing I know. <laughs> and, and my old man he it was about six two and he had the mustache and the slick back hair <laughs> did he uh, yeah and i swear to god when people would joke go you look like you're in the mob he took that as a compliment <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what was christmas like at the corielli house well you gotta remember i grew up i was half irish my mom's all irish oh. There you so, go. There you go. So, so you got the perfect podcast with Casey and Chinchimino. It's like 50 50. Oh, no. yeah. Right. So <laughs> Chris, Christmas Eve, I go to the Italian side. We do the calamari. We open a few gifts one at a time. Everyone looks at it. <laughs> then on Christmas Day, I, I go to the white trash Irish side on Levittown. <laughs> Levittown. There's like <laughs> six sisters. The porch looks like a fucking beer, uh, uh, you know, walking beer cooler at a beverage place. <laughs> Just all Budweiser's. <laughs> Everyone just throws their gifts. Take, hey, here you go, go. And everybody drinks in the kitchen and uses the sink as an ashtray. The whole night. <laughs> <laughs> my mother, my mother is part Irish. When she would finish dinner, she would have a cigarette and she would like put it out in her mashed potato leftovers, like on the plate. So oh, I'm not kidding. That, I swear to God. Listen, that is so environmentally friendly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all going in the garbage anyway. Yeah. Uh, my dad smoked lock cigarettes mm. and he would uh, pick his teeth with the back of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs floss? So good. It's funny. We used to go to. We used to. My my, my folks are both from Long Island too. Islip and oh. and and Savo, which I think that's out Ooh. there. Everyone's yeah, everyone's like that's Suffolk County, Sable. right? I grew up right next to your mom. I went to Oakdale. I was oh. Connecticut. Right on. Did Connect- you ever go out to with your mom's from Savo? Right on off of Montauk. Dude, I, uh, dude, are you kidding me? Um, what my dad it was my dad in Sable, my mom and I saw, oh. but 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 Ocean Avenue. Do you know where Ocean Avenue is on of in Sable? Dude, that's yeah. where my dad grew up, and I used to we used to go there every Christmas. I probably saw you one day. I probably hit your car with a <laughs> snowball. Hey, so any car went by, we cousins, we like just start ripping yeah. snowballs at the thing. But dude, <laughs> have you ever have you ever been to the Call House? restaurant oh yeah call. of course dude, that's yeah. my uncle john that's my uncle john john casey my my dad's brother owns that oh my god are you kidding yeah. me oh, yeah shit. yeah I, dude I, mean, I used to go to st lawrence church in sable instead of our church because my mom said the priest was way faster you get out of there like 15 minutes quicker so <laughs> and, we did, and we got the bread and left we didn't go kneel with the bread you put the bread in your mouth and just slide out <laughs> oh, yeah. while everyone else is still getting the bread. Oh my god, dude! This is, uh, th- th- this is incredible. You're saying this, I, I, and I, and I, I'm, it's a it's a great conversation. This this Sunday, I go to mass by myself, and what I, what I'm starting to find is I get older, Pete. I'm like, I show up five minutes. I'm in the second reading. When I get there, the second reading is you know already happened. The new the New Testament. I'm like, all right, it's just second reading Romans, and then bam, the gospel goes. I'm like, all right, I got the gospel, and so at least I got the gospel. If I yeah. get the Eucharist, I'm in business. So. 
I come in a second reading, five minutes, slide in the back, boom, I get, and then I go up, get the Eucharist, you know, hey man, boom, I'm rolling. And then what I do, what I've been doing lately, is, uh, I mean, is I've been sliding over to the, to like the, you know, the holy water, quick, yeah. our father, and I'm out the door and I'm like, what oh. am I doing? I'm like, I'm showing up late and leaving early. I didn't even- <laughs> Hey, at least you're t- at least you're dipping a toe, and you know what? I think I might gotta steal the doing the holy water while I still got the bread. In the yeah. That's a double down. I love it. Oh my god! I always tell I always tell my family too. Now my daughter can get it. Our church has uh, the priest, and then the other guy is just some guy in a suit. They're both doing the body of Christ. I always tell my family, don't get it from the guy in the suit. It don't have the same power. <laughs> You got it. You got a double Dutch over to the priest line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want to know what you're doing up there. Guy. What do you think this is a hot dog stand? Get the fuck out of here. It's the body of Christ. You don't belong up here in your freaking TJ Maxx suit. Come on. <laughs> oh Sorry with the F bomb. So good. No, I like so it. So good. All right. Oh, well, I, I, hey, I got another question. Now, now yeah. that we're on, now that we're on mass, I think it's a great, it's a great thing. Uh, you know, COVID happens. You know, we got all the thing on. You know, we got the mask on now, and now we don't yeah, have them. But, yeah. you know, you go do the peace offering, you know, peace be with you. But now you just give a – you wave to the guy next to you to the right, right? Right. Dude, this Sunday I'd had enough, and I, they're like, peace be with you. And there was a dude to my right. I just – I went right in for the handshake, old school. <laughs> I'm like, peace be with you, bro. And he comes in. Bam, I just start hitting everybody around me. I turn around. I'm like, peace be with you, too. Peace be with you. Like, I was punching yeah. people. Yeah. Peace be with you. Yeah. And, like, one one older woman, like, she kind of took two feet back, and she, like – she just gave me the – you know, put her hand up. I was like, peace be with you, ma'am, you know, even though you're not going to yeah. shake my hand. But what do you right. think? What do you think well, about that? Like, well, shouldn't we go I, back I to gotta, shaking I, hands? I got to be honest. I'm, I'm the other way. I loved when it got shut down because of COVID. <laughs> because sometimes I'd get anxious. I'd be looking at a guy to my left going, oh, God, is he going to want to do the handshake? With the guy? I don't know. <laughs> And I think you're shaking everyone's hand because in your head, you're like, listen, I ain't going to be here when this ends, so let me say my goodbyes now. <laughs> I leave 10 minutes early. You can't shout on the way out. <laughs> you're like, look at this guy. He comes in late, starts spreading COVID all over his joint, and then he slides out the back. <laughs> so good. I'm sorry. So We're not even joking about that. Just, I don't want to joke about that stupid oh, movie. Oh, right. oh, oh my God. I have a shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh I went to uh, I went to confession recently. You ready? Oh when was the last time? Oh, whoa! That? It's been a few years, bro. I just That's I what? just I confessed, like, hey, Lord, if you could hear me, listen up. My bad for like you know lying about that little you know what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, I went yeah, to my yeah, cousin's yeah. confirmation. You know, you got to go to the room. I had to go because my daughter was just getting her communion, and before she could, she had to go. So there's no one at the church. You see the priest in there. She goes, she comes out. I told some of the cast, I said to Sebastian, I go, I'm going in. And my wife's Catholic too. And she goes, why? And I'm like, for the cast. For the cast. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what you do. I was going off the movies, you know, like you see the movies. Like I just go there, I'm like, bless me, Father. Uh, right in. And then he goes, how long has it been? And I'm like in my head going, oh, that's what they say in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, but then, there, but then there's a, there's also a prayer you have to say when you're in there, right? And and well, and, and I end, couldn't re- I couldn't remember it. And they're like, okay, right. go ahead and recite the prayer. And I'm like, I just went like blank. I'm like, I don't remember that one. He's like, all right, let me help you through it. And then I, he gave me a card. And we're reading it together. So I'm like, thank God he brought the card. You know, like a yeah. chi or something. Uh, yeah, no, because I had the same thing. He wanted us to do to our father, and I go, I only I don't know the whole thing, father. Like. <laughs> You know, so and he goes, well, he goes, that's OK. And then he goes, how about we and he's going to he's going to say another one. And in my head, I'm like, guy, if I don't know your hit, we're going to do the B song. Right Shut, Shut it down. We're not praying. I go, I, I'm not familiar with any of them that well. I wanted to be like, guy, if I didn't come in here, you'd be sitting on your ass for the next 10 minutes. Nobody's here, so you know, don't start putting me to the gun with these things, all right? Nobody goes anymore. I'm so glad you I mean listen, I'm not over religious, but and I don't no. go my wife puts it best. She's like, we don't go like because we are over religious. It's just kind of 
reminds you to be civil to one another. You know, when you walk no. out of there, you just feel a little good about yourself. You feel good. Your soul's been hit with an hour. You know, I always tell my kids, yeah. like, we well, don't want to go. case, 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah, an hour for the rest of them. <laughs> it's like mass light, mass light for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I tell yeah. my girls, and my girls were going to mass. They're like, oh. And I'm like, hey, listen. Yeah. You can't give God one hour of your week just to say, hey, thanks a lot for everything that's going on, you know, in life. Yeah, <laughs> man. Things, things are going well, you know? <laughs> right. And it's like, and even if you're like, you know, these people now, I don't believe in God, then just go sit in a room and just be grateful to, <laughs> to whatever, even to yourself. Just sit right. there and go, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I don't give a shit what else you do, right? Just reflect so, for a second. It's so true. It's so I true. Know, man. How about how about this? This is this is a little this is pretty funny, but my my yeah, dad, yeah, yeah. my dad was a Catholic priest, if you can believe this. Wow. Till, till he was 30. And then he left and became, a, uh, you know, I think like a, he went from a Catholic priest to a, a restaurant manager. I'm like, whoa, that's that's a tale of two. That's a tale of two story, <laughs> stories right there. <laughs> you know, and so, dude, he told me a story one time. He's like, he's like, Shawnee, he's like, I'm sitting at the rectory. He's like, you know, you had to sit around the rectory. And my dad's like type A. He's he's me on steroids. As you can only imagine, he's like, you know, he can't sit for a, five seconds. You know what I mean? So well, uh, yeah. he's sitting there. He's like, I, you know, I'm at the rectory. He's like, and you're waiting for like someone to die give someone last rites or maybe a funeral or wedding or whatever or someone needs to talk to you so he's like this one day they're like uh, uh father uh father jim father casey uh you know we need a last rites down on ocean avenue 27 25 ocean avenue so he's like all right i'm on my way so bam he says he rolls out of the rectory rides down to 27 25 ocean avenue bam he walks in and he said this lady opens the door and she's like how you doing father he's in there so my, my dad's like, what the heck? He's like, 20, my dad says he's like 27 years old. He walks in the house. She points to the bathroom. So he opens up, opens up the bathroom, opens up the shower. The guy's freaking <laughs> out cold, not snoring. He's dead. And my dad's like, <laughs> you know, does the last rites, walks out. See you later, man. See you later. And he's like, thank you, father. Bam, out the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. I, I was like, no wonder you left the priesthood at 30, Dad. That would have been a tough job to do the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Hey, Pete. Wow, man. Yeah. Pete, I got one for you. So, uh, yeah. this is Long Island. I got to talk Long Island again. I, I remember hearing it was, uh, I think it was like Seinfeld was on, uh, was on Howard Stern once. And they were talking about why... Is there so much funny that has come out of Long Island? Like, if you think about it, like, people don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, there's millions of people that came from Long Island who are all comedians, a lot of writers, a lot of movie yeah. writers and directors. What is it that makes Long Island so funny? And why do so many comedians right. come out of there? Do you ever think about that? That's, I, I have, you know, and I think you could say the same thing specifically about, like, the New England area. Um, <laughs> and if you maybe you equate it to, and I'm just thinking this now, riffing it, man. But maybe you equate it to like a really good sports organization that, they, as they always say, the culture, the culture. So all these, I don't know, immigrants, by the way, Richie, did you know the screwdriver was invented to drink by the Long Island con <laughs> construction workers? They couldn't keep their beers cold when they were coming home from building the city. So they started mixing vodka with orange juice and they were mixing it with their screwdriver. <laughs> that That's amazing. Right? I did what, is, that, that. is that why it's called a screwdriver? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> So wow. you guys are banging out screwdrivers after working on gurneys. <laughs> All they got is humor, right? Yeah. I, no, I really feel like for whatever reason, there's a specific kind of humor. And then, you know, you grow up on it. Like, I remember as a kid one time, my, my first one, my father made fun of everything and everything. Like, I remember a, a guy worked, pulled up to do something on our house. And my father looks, looks over me and goes, oh, God, this guy looks like he's dipped in grease for 50 <laughs> fucking years. Okay? So, so. But one time my mom at the dinner table goes, and I, we had, I had a brother and sister, can we, she breaks down and goes, can we just have one meal where we don't make fun of everyone and we just, just don't, and we just talk nice? And then there's a pause and my father goes, Jesus Christ, Pat, what the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> and then we started making fun of my mother for having the breakdown, you know? So, and I think it just carries from generation to generation, right? Rich? Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, so many people I know never left the island, so I go home, like, for fishing with these guys. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I, I grew up out on the, on the South Shore, and we had bad plumbing because we were so close to the bay. And uh, right. my father... 
and one day you couldn't you couldn't flush a lot in my house because it would overflow. So my, so when my friends would come over, or something I'd be like, only number one and no no flushing, no flushing, right? So it was ridiculous. It was so embarrassing. So they had so, to go home. They had to go home for number two. Like they had well, to leave. They go up to the Shell gas station. <laughs> on Paul it was right up the block. I swear to God, right past Byron Lake, you hit the shell, come right back down, one shot, right? <laughs> so I grew up by the wharf. You ever hear of the wharf, the bar on Long Island? Yeah. Around the corner from there. Oh, so yes. anyway, so my buddy, this past summer, I go visit my buddy. Now he's got a house out in like somewhere in the middle of the place on the water. So, you know, he's, he's not even married. Uh, got, he's out on disability, he still smokes Marlboro Reds, he's got the tattoos, right? <laughs> As soon as I pull over this house from a long drive, I gotta, I gotta go. I so I go to the bathroom. I come out, and then like 10, 20 minutes later, all the buddies start showing up. And he goes, "You believe it?" He takes a drag over his marble. He goes, for, uh, "He goes for 18 years, Corielli don't let us take a shit in his house." <laughs> then he pulls up in my house after 30 years. And what's the first thing he does? He takes a dump. <laughs> I'm like, who remembers that shit? Pull <laughs> back and this and that. It was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I spent oh. some time in Richmond. That's where you grew up, right? No, oh. no, I I grew up in oh, Pittsburgh, but I went to I went to college in Richmond. In Richmond, okay. Wait, yeah, when when gotcha. the, where where did you live there? No, no, I played some clubs there. I, my wife and I spent the day on the James River. Ooh, it, oh, oh yeah, interesting <laughs> element out there. Oh my God, was there a prison break? <laughs> Holy shit! You gotta have a tattoo on your neck to go out on the James. Not out on the James River without a knife and a tattoo on your neck. <laughs> I see the brochure. I go, where are they stand up paddleboarding? Because all I see are Budweisers in the river. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so true yeah we used to go down there when i was a freshman in college for whatever reason we're like you know it's off campus obviously so we're like hey let's go to the james river and like all right cool and this you know how you do dumb super stupid really dumb things and you look back and you go how the how do we live from that so we go down there probably have a couple cold budweiser's and uh and then we, there was like this and there were these two rocks that you could go under, Pete, and you and if you could snake your body just through it, you could get through it. And we're like, "Hey, man, are you going to go under the rock today?" We're like, "Yeah, let's do that." Oh yeah, so we'd go under these two rocks and barely get through. And I remember one time, kind of like I must have had a couple a sub before I went or something. It got like one of my love handles caught. I like, Kah! and I was like literally stuck underwater, yeah. and I I, I finagled my way out. But I remember telling my buddy Jeez. Jay Adams, I go, I go. Never again, dude. Am I doing this? Let's get, yeah. let, let's stop coming to the James River and thinking going through oh. these rocks is fun because I almost right. died right there because I had the twelve inch sub at Subway before I came. Oh my <laughs> god, dude! And for what? There's not like you know a, a mermaid on the other side with beautiful breasts, right? You just high five your money when you get to the other side. Yo, we're gonna risk our lives. High five! Oh, Holy shit! Fucking knucklehead, man! Oh my god! What oh. a bunch of idiots! Such a bunch <laughs> yeah. of idiots! Oh my now, God, man. The one thing I will say, Richard, uh, not only is the, the Long Island sense of humor unbeatable, oh God. but the, the bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. It's oh, like, that's, that's, my, that's my last meal, man. Fly that in. Even if I'm like an, under a charge with murder in like Florence, <laughs> Italy, I'm like, listen, go out to Nassau County, get me bacon, egg, and cheese, and fly it in. It's fly not the it same in. anywhere else. Oh. It's not the same anywhere else. No, it's You're right. It's, it's not. It's not. Oh. I, you know what? Some places don't even try. Don't even <laughs> just stop. I can't explain it. It's unbelievable. And it's almost every deli, too, right? Oh, yeah, and absolutely. Every deli can yeah. make it beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what is Two it? What is it? Cheese. What? what is it about the bread, though, with the bagels and everything in New York? Is it really the water? That's what everybody says. It's the water. It's the water. Uh, well, is the water uh, that much better all right long island's the only place where you can make about ninety five thousand dollars a year working at deli <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, these guys pull out with better cars than me after making sandwiches all day. Yeah. delis delis are huge business on long island you drive the by biggest. a deli my heart starts to flutter like are we going in, are we going in? even that shit coffee's better than Starbucks. Yeah, you can't it. everything so I mean, Richie, sometimes you ever treat yourself to a you ho What the fuck? I'm 50 and I'm getting a you ho That's 
it's so good. It's so true. Got, you got to drink it before you get home and your wife sees it. <laughs> oh my God. What are you, what are you, 10? Hey, you who? Oh. <laughs> I'll I'll drink a Yoo Hoo, then I'll see a guy drinking a Yoo Hoo at a red light, and I'll be like, "Look at this bouncy!" Meanwhile, I didn't drink, but I didn't get caught. <laughs> you guys are pissing me. Oh my god, this is so great! Oh my god, so great! Oh man, oh, shit. Sean can't well, breathe right, right now. La so I, I, literally, go, I, I literally am crying. Yeah. I literally am crying. Um, <laughs> la last question I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you got? What do you do, What do you do with like uh, uh, supplements? You take any supplements or anything like that? I know this is a funny <laughs> question, but the yeah, reason I, I said that is because yeah. I was just thinking to myself at night. I'm like taking this bladder control thing. I'm like, you know yeah. what? I want to get good sleep because I track it. If I take the bladder control thing, I'll only do one piss. Really? Right? Yeah. Uh, so what well, I'm asking you, do you take any supplements, you know, maybe help you out at night uh, in the morning, you know, it's maybe some of that collagen or whatever. <laughs> no, no. And I pee so much at night that, that one night. Oh, my God. One night I, told, I was going to bed like, like a wife next to me and I got a, I got a stack of pennies. And she goes, the fuck are you doing with the pennies? I go, every time I get into piss, I'm, I'm putting a penny to the side. Because I always lose track. And I want to. So the next one, I go, Jack, six pennies. Six pennies. <laughs> and I go, and I probably forgot to put a penny once or twice. I'm so tired. So, you know? So I don't, I can't do supplements, but I do pee a lot. I don't know what, I don't know what, what, the, what the next move is going to be, man. Oh but it God. is ridiculous. It oh is ridiculous God. how much I know. it is. Oh, um, I know. No, that pisses. It literally pisses me off because it, it messes with you, man. I can't get back to bed. Then the brain starts going, you know, and you're probably doing a bit in the middle of the night. Fourth piss. You're like, oh, what's the next Amazon special going to be? And it's the yeah. four in the morning. Well, well, my wife, too. I mean, she's got she's going through the night sweats, which I have. I mean, hot, hot flashes. So I got a whole thing on that. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping definitely has changed <laughs> since, since we were younger. Oh my god! I, I, got, dude. A, I got a parting question for both yeah. of you. You, you as a player, and Rich, you as a commentator. Oh with it all. I was joking with Sebastian about this, but <sighs> uh, I, as gentlemen, I'll just say his first name, Tony. But he's in the front office of the New York Yankees. Fan of the cast, great guy. And uh, Cleveland's not far from me, so he leaves me and my family beautiful tickets. And the Cleveland organization was so great, right? <laughs> but I'm like. I'm like second box behind um, uh, the baddest dugout, uh, the warm the dugout. Yeah, not mm -hmm. the dugout. I'm sorry, the baddest circle. Dugout. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the on deck yeah. circle. Yeah, <laughs> on deck circle. So uh, Judge is, you know, warming up, and every time he's warming up, I'm going, Aaron, you're the best, baby. You're the best, baby. You know, nothing but love and. I mean, I used to be in the bleachers. I remember one of my, oh my best God. ones with the Yankee games. Yeah. I was coming so hard at Dave Henderson. And Ricky <laughs> Henderson was in the outfield, too. I was going to Dave Henderson. You're not even the best Henderson <laughs> in the outfield. <laughs> and then he, then he flips you to bird. And you're like, so sorry. Yeah. Like, and now you like him. You yeah. like him. <laughs> so, but, so there was always this back and forth, you know? And Judge, I mean, he don't—he didn't even give a little nod out. And I'm saying to Sebastian, now, yeah, you know, you know the price of the box seat, normally speaking, <laughs> mm -hmm. doesn't that deserve? It's, it would be like going to Sea <laughs> World, and 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 the one and the whale don't splash everybody. You, know? you, you, you got to get me wet. I, I'm in the wet seat. I'm in. I'm in the nod seat. I'm in the seat where you nod to my kid guy. Oh my <laughs> right? god, that's a good oh point. My I should be on the ticket, it's not to your kid at least one of the choices. Dude, yeah. it, remi it reminds me one time I'm, I'm, with, I'm playing against the Mets. You know, you talk about yeah. some of the maniacs. We're playing against the Mets, and I'm on deck. It's 2005, and I'm having a pretty good year. 2004, I had another all-star year. Was, you know, hit 320, 24 homers. I'm like, that guy, yeah. Yeah, 2005, man. 2005, I'm... I'm hitting 300, but I'm like, I got like seven bombs. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just having a down year or whatever, but, but it's still decent. If you're a fan. So I got this guy. He's like, Hey Casey, I'm on deck at Shea. Hey Casey, you're killing my fantasy team. He's like, <laughs> I need the 2004 Casey back. The 2005 Casey is killing my team. And he wouldn't ah. stop. He wouldn't stop. Running. So it's like, third at bat, I come out, Pete. I'm like, oh, is this guy going to still continue doing this? Like, 
what's up with the RBIs, Casey? Your RBIs are killing me. He's like, you're not getting the, hitting for enough power. And I find her like, I go, bro, get a freaking life. You got to get a life. I go, oh, I'm busting my ass out of here. I know I don't have any homers, but you come out and try and hit these guys. I got Tom Glavin getting four inches off the plate tonight. What the hell's going on? I, I got Johnny Franco throwing me two seamers inside. You try and hit these guys. I love it. I love it, man. That's such a New York moment. You're, giving him, you're talking to him like he's the third base coach. You know? And then I'm like, why, I'm like, why am I having a conversation with the guy four rows up i'm like i'm the whale giving him the, you know, the giving him the water like yeah you know <laughs> well i gotta tell you uh, richie you, you know you'll appreciate this back from you too like you remember the big east tournament game uh, back yeah, oh, dude, pit. i was a pit yeah. huge pit fan shoot so wait so this was uh so the, you know the garden this was like after that was starting to die out and they were having like i think they had the nit you know and that mm -hmm. doesn't draw the same right. i had ticket i worked at a hotel and i had tickets and Indiana was playing, uh, like uh, I think it was Ohio State, that, that short little white point guard. I can't remember his name. But anyway, at one point, Bobby Knight was coming so hard at his plays. And this was like before all the accusations got crazy. But you knew it already, right, the way it was. So I, we got great seats. It's not packed. And I'm with a couple of buddies of mine. And Bobby's yelling at a guy. And I start going, <laughs> right? So awful thing to say. Next day in the post, they were saying the fans were coming at Bobby so hard, one of them even dared to say him. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm getting floated in the post. That's so awesome. I'm excited to see Patino come back. He's going to buy He's gonna buy a, He's gonna buy 3,000 dudes and make them good again. Under the yeah, table, tractors, I, I, everything, like blue chips. I mean, it's crazy. You know, the old recruiting process would be like, oh, you love the campus? Have you seen the maple trees? Like, you know. Now, now to pitch this guy, I'll work on your three-point shot. You'll go from the second round to the lottery pick, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. an NBA training camp. You yeah. go Rick Pitino, it's NBA training Absolutely. camp. Absolutely. That's what it is. Oh I'm so God. excited. I'm so – I feel bad about the last coach. He was, like, really, yeah, like, railroaded You're St. John's guy? You're St. John's fan? Big time. I'll, I still got a Redmond hat. Hold on. Hold on, hold oh, on, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. Not, I, I, you know what I mean? The only ones who don't mind when I wear it, believe it or not, are Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It makes sense. Right, Rachel, no. The Indians yeah. are the only one that didn't mind when we were called the Redmen. My dad, this, my dad went to St. John's. This isn't, <laughs> they have a Native American when it was still the Redmen. <laughs> This was from St. John's. Don't blame me, folks. My dad made me take it. Louis Kahn a second guess. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I think we got to get rid of this thing. I don't think this is this is what people do anymore with this. They changed the name of the team like 15 years ago. Like, we got to get this out of the house. <laughs> we got to get cousin, it out of the house. Yeah. My cousin was a big time baseball player. I'm, uh, at a, he went to St. John's. He got drafted late, but he played for the Phillies minor league. Never got all the way. But he was a St. John. We love St. John's yeah, growing up, man. Oh Mullen. God. Oh, yeah, Walter Mullen. Berry. Mark Jackson. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That oh, my great. God. Hey, Pete, this yeah. has been incredible, I dude. Fun. Like, thank Same. you so much for coming on with us. This has been amazing. How can, I had a how, can how can our listeners find you, brother? We want, we want to make sure our listeners are finding you. And, you know, how can, yeah. we, re how can we find you? The, the easiest way is pcorielli.com. You just Google my name. You'll see my website. It'll take you to the cast I do with Sebastian. It'll take you to some specials. It'll take you to my dates where I'm playing. And you're good awesome. to go that way, man. Yeah, listen, you awesome. guys, shit. I, if I come to Pittsburgh, we're getting dinner. And Richie, if I come to Long Island, we're getting dinner. I got to go to the Paramount. <laughs> I, just, I just realized you were at the Paramount, what, like three, four weeks ago. That's like 25 minutes from my house. I was so pissed I didn't notice that you were there. You were there well, on the next, next time I will let you know. Yeah, oh, that was fun. great, man. It was a great time. Oh, yeah, great. So look forward to doing it again. So, you guys, I had a blast. I had a oh, blast, <laughs> man. Thanks for having me, man. So thanks for fun, coming Pete. On. Thanks, for, thanks for joining us, man. We had an absolute yeah. blast, and we can't wait. We're, we're going to connect, bro, at some point. And if you want Chinch and I on the show or whatever, we're, 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 we're game. You just let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen, uh, good luck with the season, man. It's exciting. It should be fun, you know? Yeah, it's going to hey, be great, man. By the way, I, I know we're leaving, but do you know, you must know Billy Gardell, right? He's a oh, big dude, guy. Oh, dude, I know Gardell well. Dude, I know Gardell well. We do the, do you, do you know any of the guys here? Do you know like Billy Crawford? 
Do you know Bill Crawford, comedian here? Like no, Ray, he, Randy Bauman, they do the morning show, but Gardell does the morning Gardell's show with like those guys. One, yeah, he's one of my best friends. I mean, we're like Bro, thick as thieves. He, so yeah, he, dude, really, yeah. if you talk to Gardell, tell him I said he is the greatest dude. That guy, yeah. and he's got that real Pittsburgh accent too. He's a real yeah. Yenzer. He's a real yeah, Yenzer. Man. He loves Pittsburgh. He loves oh, he, Pittsburgh. Oh, he yeah. loves it, dude. He's a legend. A legend. Yeah. Well, listen, man. It was great hanging with you two legends, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank I'm you, Pete. So honored, man. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Thank you, man. I had a Thank great you, time, man. Later, fellas. Thank you.